I started recording. Good evening again. It's five o'clock. I'm sure you checked till uh, the learning page. Before that, please don't forget to write your ID and name in the chat. Um, uh, just an update on what I did since last time. This is our third meeting. So since last time, okay, I, I told you last time uh, about emailing me for uh, any office hour and uh, Ragad as well. And I, I talked to Ragad and she's always anytime willing to meet with anybody who needs her. And this is her email. Um, uh, she's working with uh, engineer Mahmoud Faris uh, to, you know, to prepare the packages uh, of the microcontrollers for you guys. She, you know, she, once she notifies me, I'll let you know so you, you can do have a schedule or something to, uh, to go pick them up from the lab. Then what I uploaded last time, these are the slides we used last time. I also uploaded a few resources, some data sheets, manuals, instruction set, schematics, I'll come to them one by one as we as we use them. Okay, so, but I, I just put them there for now. We're going to be using them frequently. The main assignments tasks and here are the so meeting number one link. You know what? Should I just hide the the, link, the links that expired? Is that okay if you, for you guys? Ah, oh, doctor, it's convenient. Actually, yeah. can. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll I'll just hide and just keep the link for the la, yani the 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 coming meeting. So I'll hide this for your yani, uh, any from your page. You won't see it. So meeting two also hide. You will not see it. So the first thing you'll see me class meeting recording two then the link for next class. So after this class, you'll have the recording for meeting three, then the link for meeting four and so on. Okay, so, and I created this discussion forum. A discussion forum for everybody just to share experience, ask questions, discuss any issue. And so this is, you, know, you just ca can create a new discussion topic or this discussion topic, whatever you go there, I write something, uh, guys who ran into a problem, blah, 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 blah. You can, you can, you can reply to this and people make use of the, the any discussions that go uh, over here. So I encourage you to use this. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be me that who responds to everything. You, you could you know, all help each other. If I need to interact, uh, uh, you know, somebody should trigger me. Um, that's it for the e-learning. I guess we can move to, Allah, I'm not sharing screen. Am I sharing screen? <laughs> no. Guys? Not, not yet, not yet, doctor. Oh, not yet. Why are you going to be a e-learning? We're going to be a e-learning. Okay, you're going to be a e-learning. Okay, okay. <laughs> so this is what I showed you. This is what I just showed you. Now you see my screen, right? You see my screen? Yes. Yeah, yes, now yes. Yes. Uh, right. yes. Uh, we talked about emailing. Here is the slides for the last uh, class. From uh, so I'll keep putting them underneath each other in order. Uh, then under resources, I added these manuals, uh, schematics, instruction set, uh, etc. And uh, we will come to them. Uh, every now and then. And at the end, I, I just hided these uh, class meeting links that expired. And uh, uh, this is still there, right? Yeah, the recording will be there. I'll add it every time after the class, worst case next day. Um, and here's the discussion forum I was talking about. I believe you guys can add topics 
any a topic about lab number two, for example, or a topic about something. I don't know. Uh, but I, I put the first topic here. You guys can just go and uh, discuss things here. And you just can, somebody write something. Uh, you, anybody can reply to it and so on. Okay. So this is it for the e-learning. And again, uh, the class schedule. I want to point out to this uh, page. I also updated to, uh, uh, yeah, almost every uh, every class after a class. So meeting number one, we discussed the syllabus and orientation of the class. Meeting number two, which was last time, we introduced embedded systems and my research. This is the link to the slides. And then you can find the, the video, the recorded video for the lecture. So I'll try to keep this trend. So today is uh, March 1st, right? So these are the topics we're going to discuss, the slides. This is not final. I put this before the, the, the lecture, but after the lecture, I'll fine tune it to have it uh, any more accurate. And I'll put the links, or if I'm going to post a, a homework, a lab, or whatever. And I already did. I don't, I don't know if you guys any paid attention to this uh, uh, even uh, any lecture by lecture breakdown. I, I tried to put every topic we're going to cover in every lecture, uh, this, some references we're going to use in that lecture. And um, I even went to when I'm going to post homework one, what kind of demo we're going to do here. Um, uh, I'm going to show some documents here um, uh, related to something. So I, I have some planning going on here. Uh, I'm going to pass uh, post lab number one uh, on week six, Methelan. It's going to be due on week seven, uh, April 8th. And see, so yeah, I, I tried to put some things. Everything is uh, negotiable, but uh, something there is better than nothing. So you can you can get an idea. Uh, other assignments, assignments, uh, midterm. So my plan date for the midterm is to be May fifth, um, uh, and so on. Okay. Uh, but May, isn't oh you know what May fifth is a little late, right? May fifth uh, is uh, uh, before. We're talking about. Uh, if we're talking about 16 weeks, uh, uh, the mid should be in the middle. So, so, so sometime in week eight or nine, right? Uh, and that would be Ramadan. When, when, when you know, when we got come closer to those days, I mean, I, this is just something in place. I, I try to mimic old semesters, but. Um, uh, we will for sure yani, revisit them. Uh, I need to look at the calendar. When are going to be the... And we don't know yet it's going to be on campus or virtual, right? The midterm. It's not final. So let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. And But I just thought to show you the, the schedule and that uh, yani, you can find everything in, in one place. So what did I do in this class? Oh, okay. We, we use these presentations. This was the recording, and this was a link to a, a data sheet, etc. Okay. Um, so that's it for here. Let's go and start the class. So in today's class, we're going to talk about in computer systems in general, embedded computers, and microprocessors versus microcontrollers. And again, I'm I'm going to stop. I'm sh I stop sharing. Right? You see me now, so. You see me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, yani, I'm always uh, looking around, seeing what people do, um, try to improve. And I found these books in my book uh, shelf, in addition to almost four or five more. But these are were the most recent ones I bought. And uh, they're still all brand new. Um, I, uh, I did these evaluation copies to see what people are doing and what where we can work on. So this is our book. 
This is our book that we were using in this class. I have three other books here. If you see their, um, their titles, um, any, the, this fir first one is uh, Model Based Engineering for Complex Electronic Systems. Another one is Embedded Systems Architecture Design for Engineers, a, compre a comprehensive guide for engineers and programmers. Real-time embedded systems, and much more on embedded system design using this DSP microcontroller, embedded system design on using this uh, ARM uh, controller, and embedded systems on using this Atom, Intel Atom microcontroller, etc. You know what, I mean, after these years of teaching this course, uh, I, I taught it, as I told you, using this microcontroller once, uh, the, these SCS-12 microcontrollers. Uh, I did it once with uh, DSPIX, uh, and we do it for undergrad with, with the PICS. Um, in addition to any uh, other places where I use other controllers, the concept is the same. At the end of the day, you look at these books, okay, they're all, all the same. Even open any one of those books, I'm gonna show you that any um, later. Uh, when you talk about an embedded computing system, it has some components. One of those components is the computer. And the, where comes the, the power of that computer? What are, what, 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 is, what are the features, the characteristics of that computer? Okay, so it's, it's sometimes different uh, in terms of the analog to digital converter, for example, in the SCS-12, you can configure it to be 10-bit or uh, uh, 12 bit in, in another computer in, in, in a big computer controller, it's 12, I, I think it's 12 or 10. You cannot configure it. Uh, a PWM, this one has, a, uh, for example, a, uh, four PWM channels, eight bit, eight bit each. This one has eight channels, you can configure them as eight bit or 16 bit, etc. So it's about more features or more features. You buy, you buy a car, the concept is there, but this one has more 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 options, more uh, loaded with more uh, uh, stuff. But at the end of the day, the purpose is to use this computer, this controller, in building a bigger system, which includes the other things that the computer uses to make things useful, which are sensors, uh, actuators, and how to interface them. So the concept is the same. Uh, I, I found it useless just, you know, just go find another hardware and make it work and, and find new book and new slides and new, I didn't find any value yet for us, uh, any, to look for something different for uh, this topic. Okay, so uh, I like to share again with you the, my finding this, um, yeah, I need to be more confident. This, uh, of course, there are diamond, you know, since it's a, for most of us, it's the first embedded design uh, course, and it's already um, advanced with model-based uh, stuff and industrial stuff and real-time stuff, operating systems. Um, so, uh, the hardware we're using is uh, is doing the job and it's uh, it's working and available. Okay, so uh, any, uh, why did I mention this? Uh, I, I mentioned it because we're going to be talking about concepts. Okay, so one for example, I talk about a microcontroller or I talk about the program memory in this microcontroller. It's not about this hardware. I may add this things in this hardware, but we can work together to generalize, okay? And make what we talk about applicable everywhere. Fine. Uh, let's start with the, these slides. These slides are the book slides, the, the, the um, by the author of the book. What did I do? Okay. 
طيب this is chapter one. When talking about computer systems, why are we talking about computer systems? Because we're this class in, is an embedded system design class, embedded system, embedded computing system. So we're talking about a computer that is embedded somewhere. Okay, in all computers, we use the number systems. Of course, you had in your career or in your uh, in, uh, in your undergrad some introductory course about these things, right? So, but just a, a quick re revision. We're talking about number systems. Um, uh, humans use decimal number systems. Uh, com uh, control uh, computers. Okay, why is it okay? Decimal number systems. Computers use zeros and ones. Binary number systems. Okay. So uh, almost everywhere, when we write code in assembly or in C, we're going to uh, be using binary number systems. Binary number systems, binary number systems, uh, every group of uh, eight digits, OK, usually every eight digits, eight bits, we call them, eight bits. Okay, we represent them as two digits of hexadecimal. So for these four bits, this number is four. And for these four bits, one, 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 zero, seven. So this is hexadecimal number 47. Okay, hexadecimal is 47 to the base 16, right? I'm sorry, isn't, isn't this one is six, the first one? Well, I six. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Yes. Yep. The four would be one zero zero. Okay. 67. 67, base 16. Okay. So, um, when we, this, any, uh, uh, any, needless to say, we need to be able to use binary, binary numbers, hexadecimal numbers. In general, when we write numbers uh, in our code, in assembly, in assembly, this table shows the assembly re representation for the, our microcontroller that we are using. When we want to say that this, this number is not a 10, it is a two, we write a, a percent sign next to it, okay? This means this number is binary, okay? The at is octal, decimal, we don't write anything. So a 10 is a 10. You don't write anything to it, next to it. The, it means it's, it's decimal. Okay, 10 base 10. This one is one zero, which is, which is two, base two. Okay, um, hexadecimal is the dollar sign. Which is weird, right? Oh, yeah, it's not weird. So the the sixty seven here, in, in in when we write assembly, we write it dollar sign sixty seven. Okay, this means hexadecimal number sixty seven. Okay. This is in uh, in 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 uh, in assembly. In C, it's different. In C, hexadecimal sixty seven is zero x. 67 okay we use the 0x to to say that a number is uh, hexadecimal a decimal we just write 67 that, that means it's to base 10 any we don't write anything in front of it 0b is for binary 0b 11011100 this is for binary in c okay but in hexadecimal the, the in this in the development uh, uh, environment we're going to use the the person sign is for binary the dollar sign is for hexadecimal and of course we're going to be using modulus math modulus, modulus math because the number of digits that you can use to represent a number is limited right so if you use eight bits to re represent a number in eight bits, how many numbers can you represent? Two to the 18, right? Which is? 256 numbers, right? 256 numbers. 
zero down to 255 right if it if this if this is unsigned right what if it's signed Minus 128 to plus 127, right? Right. Which is which is eight zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones, right? Ili here in decimal and in, in hexadecimal. Okay, which is zero play dollar sign zero zero down to dollar sign f f right because these four ones is an f these four ones is an f oh r and f okay what happens so if I'm doing a counter zero one two three up to two fifty five plus one, what, what would happen? You flip over back to zero. Jana zero. Right, you flip over back to zero. Okay, that's the, just, the, this is any, the, the, the numbers, the number system that the computer system is gonna be using. For a reason, uh, the time doesn't show on my screen. I don't know why the same. It's five twenty-two. Okay, and you, you 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 guys keep your eye. Um, so what's a computer? And sorry, some stuff are trivial, but sometimes I I, and I need to recap some concepts. A computer uh, is a machine that consists of software and hardware. Okay. Let me start with hardware, okay? Then we go to software. Any computer system has a processor, which we sometimes call a CPU, which sometimes we call a microprocessor, right? And so this is component number one. Then we have memory two, then we have IO devices, three, right? So hardware is processor, memory, and IO, input output devices, which are the preferences. The processor contains a control unit, right? contains an arithmetic logic unit, right? And some storage uh, space, we call them registers. The memory can be classified from the usage point of view, from a usage point of view, into program memory, or data memory. And we're going to be dealing with these. So program memory or data memory from how you're gonna use them. From the technology point of view, these are either RAM, right, or ROM, right? Usually, 
Hello, when we talk about RAM, RAM, there are many kinds of RAM. Dynamic RAM, static RAM, I'm not gonna go any deeper. ROM, we, we have EPROM, uh, our PROM, EPROM, right? E square PROM, flash, right? So usually the data memory, data storage, you use it to store data. And the program storage, you use it to write your program in, right? When you write a program on a computer, a standalone computer, if you see my camera, just such as this one I'm holding, it has a program in it, right? While there is no electricity connected to it at this moment, but there is a program inside. It's on a chip. This chip is the program memory. Enable to keep the data or the program in this case, over there in that memory, even without any kind of power, you need a technology that supports that. So usually the program memory or the program storage used by microcontrollers, again, here I'm using, I'm talking what kind of computers? Embedded computers, okay? Embedded computers which we call sometimes micro controllers. Because microcontrollers, the name came from the main purpose when this, these things came up is to control things. So what would you expect that the program storage type be? Room? Or Shadi, whoever. What would you expect the program memory to be? Oh. A kind of read-only memory. Okay. But what a read-only memory that you can uh, uh, write over and over again, right? It's not a one-time you program. أتوقع ممكن هي رام لأنه هي كلها تمبرري هون مش راح تكون بشكل بيرمنت حتى ال program ممكن the program has to be permanent يعني now I I'm gonna program this microcontroller مصطفى I'm gonna write in it something that controls the temperature in a room then I want to sell it while in the truck what happens with the program it should be, it should stay in place, right? So it has to be permanent, okay. right? So when, when we're talking about RAM, RAM is a, is a volatile memory, right? Yeah, it needs power actually. So we can't write a program on it. These uh, kinds, the RAM, are non-volatile, right? Non-volatile memory means that if you disconnect power from them, the what's in them is gonna stay there, right? So the, what whatever holds the program has to be non-volatile. So it's one of these types, right? And it is a flash actually. Microcontrollers use flash memory for their programs. What is flash memory? It's a type of E square prom. What is E square prom? Electrically erasable programmable uh, from. Right. And uh, يعني, let's go back. Again, if, if this is any يعني, boring. Uh, read only memory, RAM. What, what does that mean? It's a volatile. Hi. Without power, you will lose everything. Th that's a feature. That is, it is non-volatile, right? When you disconnect uh, power, you're gonna save, I mean, what's saved in there is gonna stay there. But what does ROM stand for? Read only Sorry. memory. Read only memory. Yeah. Only memory. 
it's read only. That means you, you cannot write it? As a user, you cannot uh, change it. As a user, yani the first time you can write it or you can buy a PROM and as a user, you can program it, PROM, but only once. You cannot erase it. So you get an EPROM, erasable programmable ROM, and this is, you, you put it under an uh, ultraviolet, right? And things get connected back again. And E-square prom is a electrically erasable programmable ROM. Flash memory is a type of E-square prom, but it is accessed when you write or read it. Instead of writing a byte by byte, you, you, you write a block or read a block. So in terms uh, uh, of reading it or writing it, uh, you're, you do things much faster because you're, you're reading once or writing once. Okay, you, do, you don't have to go an address at the address of every single byte and read it. So you can read two kilobytes once in one shot here, method. That's why flash, flash memory is, is, any, is somehow faster, okay? Uh, speaking of this, what is RAM? Random access memory. Random access memory. Yani. Um, it's a memory that you can access through process processing the uh, operations that you program, but it's erasable uh, once you don't have any electricity. And how is it different than RAM? I'm not quite sure, but probably in the architecture of the design of the same memory. You can rewrite over it. Uh-huh. Oh, it's volatile. Yani بتروح لما تروح electricity كمان. Right. Right. Oh, temporary to store to store data. So, so it's it's volatile. And it's a buffer. The RAM is like a buffer storage. Okay. But why, why, so these are all features of RAM, right? Why do they, why, why do they call it RAM? Because it's available for all applications? Uh, does that, is that mean, the meaning? Any RAM is what? Random? Access memory, right? Doctor, لما تتخزن فيها الداتا الشخص يتخزن ورا بعض يعني يعني ممكن عرفت إنه ما ناس المعلومة بالضبط بس مش شرط إنه تكون sequence إنه كله بالداتا إنه كله يأخذ ال right right you you're there you're there شاد الرام أسرع من الروم صح well not necessarily not not necessarily no. I mean, it's a random and it takes you randomly, without any any manageable. Well, it, it, there is a manager managing thing, but uh, the random comes from where? It, it comes from something. Yeah, you you guys are close. Doctor, doctor, the RAM if you put it in it and put it in the battery, it's not going to be able to charge it. But the RAM, yeah, because doctor, commander, yeah. كمان الرام إنه هي نقدر إنه نخزنها during and after the process ولكن الرام إنه عن طريق the manufacturer. Well, uh, what if, what if it is E square prom? Uh, oh. You can, right? So RAM, random access memory. Let's talk about. Uh, into Lahaktu Lahaktu cassettes, tapes. Yani, some people do Malahagumish. So, a tape, a cassette is, is, is a storage uh, yani space, right? Yes. And if you have a cassette, if you have a cassette, and there's a tape in it. Okay. 
and you need to yeah, this is a cassette huh? and you need to access some data over here stored over here magnetic magnetically what is the time going to be any to reach and this is the head that reads the the head of the cassette recorder or the machine that reads the the magnetic field while it passes by um what is the what is the time it's going to take to read some piece of data song for example stored at this location starting at this location versus something so stored starting at this location is this is gonna, is this is going to take more time to start reading this or this one is going to any one is going to read fast first or two is going to read for, for uh, first uh, two. two is first two two first Two first. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, it is sequential. It is sequential, and the time is is not linear because you know when this turns, the the the, the, the this becomes larger, صح? so it pulls more tape, right? So it's not it's not going to be linear. It's going to be faster when as you go, right? So this is the access time for a tape, a cassette. Like what about a hard disk drive? A hard disk drive. A hard disk drive. You have a magnetic desk, right? With a magnetic head reading. And this turns, right? This desk turns. This de and this head lifts up and, li and goes down, right? And you can read anything stored on this surface right but how do you know where the thing is stored by going and reading what what do you call it fat right file allocation table right when you when you format your hard disk you, you choose fat fat 16 fat 32 right and tfs so and T file system. Well, uh, guys, uh, you're not uh, you're not old timers, for the new generation. Anyways, so when you go when you read something for stored on a hard disk, you first need to go check it in a file allocation table that shows the cluster, right? The cluster and the track where the file is stored at. So you, okay, file uh, ali.txt, this is what you find in the table, is stored at cluster two, track two. So you go to cluster two and track two, and you read it, right? So the at time to access this file stored over here is gonna be different than the time needed to access this file over here because the desk in this case will have to turn more, right? So here, here, the access time depends on L, the length, the length of the tape. Here, the access time depends on omega, right? The 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 angle the desk is gonna turn. So uh, did we get the sense what does access time mean? Come on. Now, in a RAM, in a RAM, a RAM is what? Basically, bas what is this? What is the smallest? What is the smallest piece 
of storage or, or the, 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 the smallest storage element. But a bit uh, is, 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 an, is, is the, um, yes, the thing that you can store, but the place where can, you can store it in. Four bits. But, yani, where can you, st you store one bit? Where can you store one bit? Four bits in the register. No, one bit, one bit. Transistor? Huh? In a capacitor or a transistor? Uh, a capacitor or a transistor. Does one capacitor store one bit? It needs a transistor with it, right? To build something yes, called to build something called flip flop, right? So the smallest storage element is a flip flop. Remember the flip flops when you studied logic in your second year of engineering? Yes. Okay. Remember, so she has a hick. Ah, the green. Okay. Yes, uh, and or uh, yeah, this kind of and or and or or whatever. So flip flops. Remember them, right? Their building block. This the uh, flip flop could be made of a one transistor or a one capacitor, and they call it in this case what DRAM, right? Or six transistors to build a one bit for. And SRAM. Anyways, we have a flip flop. <laughs> this is not a logic class. So if we put next to each other, one, two, three, four, then another four, one, two, three, four, what is this? The byte. Four, four flip flops. Oh, sorry, one flip flop. Stores stores a one bit, right? If you put eight flip flops next to each other, one byte. They store eight bit, which is one byte. Sorry, one byte. What do we call them? Registrarium can register. Right. So if we have a register, and then another register. And then, yeah, you go down with my bit deck. Huh? Another register. Another register. Then 1,024, 1,024 registers. Huh? Let's say we have 1,024 registers. This store one kilo byte, right? Right? Yes. Yes. And uh, when you studied digital logic, you know that every register can, can be enabled or disabled, right? So I, I, I want to show you some something. I, I want to show the, this concept. So and I'm sorry, here on the side, then I go and find out that we skipped a few slides. Yeah, it's okay. Um, we are with you. Okay. Um, so so if we have this RAM, now now this 1024 registers create one kilobyte RAM, right? Now, if we have this one kilobyte RAM, now this RAM could be an SRAM or a DRAM, depending if it's building block for the flip-flop is includes a capacitor and a transistor or six transistors, right? But we have RAM. And here on the side, we have the processor. The processor in it, there is a control unit. We just talked about it. I'm gonna come back to more details about control units. We have some other registers and we have an ALU, arithmetic logic unit to do the math that we want on the data that is either in the registers or in the RAM. 
Now, the, the, the processor communicates with the RAM using three kinds of buses. Yani, there is something called a, a data bus. And there is something called a address bus. Address bus. And control bus. And there is a control bus. Okay, and here every line is a register, right? Every line is a register. And to make it easy, let's assume that uh, these are, um, we have, and let's assume that these are, we have uh, three bit, yani three address lines. So address 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, then uh, one, one, one. Although yet, yeah. So, oops. So seven locations, eight locations. Sorry. Right. So eight locations. So th this is called the address zero zero zero. Address zero zero one. And in each address, what do you do? You can store eight bits. When you learned how to design a register and use a register, there was an enable bit for each register. Enable. Enable. I'm not gonna write it everywhere, but yeah, enable. Every register has an enable. When this enable is active, whatever, and there are lines. So the address bus, I'm gonna come to the address bus. Um, this is the data bus. So if a register stores eight bit, then we have eight lines of data. So the, eight, the data bus is eight bit. So data zero is connected to bit zero of every register, okay? Bit zero. Data bit one is stored, or connected, sorry, to bit one of every Register. Then data bit two is connected to bit two of every register. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not gonna continue. Huh? So Akrishi bit seven is connected to bit seven of every register. Then comes the data bus, the address bus, sorry, the address bus. What you want to do is, if you want to store something in this address, you want to make this line enabled. So whatever is on this bit, uh, on the data bus, so if the data bus has one, 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 sorry, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, uh, eight bit, they move along the data bus and stand on the gates of each, or the door of each of the bits, right? So if you write a one here, then you have a one waiting here, a one waiting here, a one waiting here, a one waiting here, right? Moving the speed of electricity, the speed of electron. Play. Uh, same goes for here. If you have a zero here, then the zero propagates in the speed of electron, and it is, it is waiting to get inside the flip-flop of each line but it doesn't get in there unless the enable is enabled, right? So what makes an address enabled if the address is on the address bus, right? So for this enable, 
يعني if we get this enable and draw an AND gate simply and I'll do something simpler later but يعني something to, to understand another AND gate to the, ena uh, the enable of the second line then another enable AND gate to the enable of the third line and so on by other line huh? these are AND gates huh? AND and what should I do? The address, the address bus are these in, th in blue, the three lines, right? Address zero, address one, address two. So I'm just gonna draw them here. Address zero, address one, and address two. Right? Hello, you connect them to the input of the AND gates, all AND gates. Okay. Then let's continue. The other one. Yeah. Well, they're not the last one. They should be eight ones, right? Eight, eight gates. Okay. So if you, if I want to write my data here, right? This enable should be one, one. The address bus has a zero, 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 right? When you have a zero, 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 you want this bit or this register enabled, any one here, right? So you need a one when these are zeros. So what do you do? You put three bubbles here, right? Or three inverters. Ah, inverter. Is it clear my drawing? Inverter. Inverter. Here on the right. This is an inverter. Okay. Okay. Inverter. And we any we any we draw it sometimes to simplify as a bubble, huh? If I want to write my byte here, I write it on the data bus, right? Then I enable this line by writing a 001 because this, uh, this is the address of 001, right? On this line. So if I write a 001, I don't want this to be one. This should be a zero. And it is, we have three inverters, so this is gonna flip, so you're gonna get the zero, right? The only one is this, zero, I put an inverter, another zero, zero, one, where, where the one is, I don't put an inverter, right? So when you write a zero inverted one, and zero inverted one, one not inverted one, so we get the one. So this is the only line that is gonna be enabled and the data is gonna go into here. Tamam? Now, this is any, this makes it a RAM, a random access memory. So let's say this. And you want to store this byte, one, 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 zero, 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 zero. At what address will you enter? At this address, at address four. Mashi? بدي أخزن one 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 zero 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 here right one 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 zero 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 right so what do I do I write this is coming from the data bus I was from the data bus one 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 zero 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 right I put them on the data bus they propagate in the speed of electron and they are waiting there on the input of all registers at the same moment, right? But they are not stored except in the register that is enabled. So I have to enable this one. How do I enable it? Oh, this, this, this line's address is one, one zero, zero, right? 4K. 
So I go to the address bus and I write a one zero zero. So the one zero zero propagate to the enables of all lines, right? So they are here. One zero zero. One zero zero. One zero zero. One zero zero. Only one of these enables is going to be enabled. Because when you design these AND gates, so for the 100, what is the AND gate going to be lo looking like? For a zero, I put a bubble. The mission virtual. So, uh, so 100, and I'm going to add some. Well, You have three inputs. So uh, A2 is connected here, A1 is connected here, A0 is connected here. So I want it, this one to be enabled when I write only one, zero, zero, right? So I put a bubble here at the zero and a bubble here at the zero. A bubble, what is it a bubble? A bubble is an inverter. An inverter. Input is a one, the output is a zero. If the input is a zero, the output is a one, right? So you invert the what's coming in. So this line, you get a one, not inverted, so it's a one. This one, you get a zero, inverted, it becomes a one. Zero, inverted, it becomes a one. One and one and one is what is one. So this is enabled, so this data comes in. And this is the only line that is going to be enabled. Everything else, because the, their, their inverters are different because of their address, right? So this last one, Mathalan, is not going to have an inverter. This one, the AND gate, is going to the, only... One inverter. One inverter, inverter at this place. This one is going to be one inverter in the middle. This one is going to have two inverters, right? I can replace all this with, with a multiplexer, right? Uh, yeah. Or a decoder, sorry, with a decoder, right? I can replace all these AND gates with a three to eight decoder, right? Seven, eight. One, two, three, right? If, if you write a zero, 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 only enable one will be one. Everything is else is zero. If you write a, uh, if, if this is any input, zero input one, input two, right? If you write a zero, zero, one, only E1 is gonna be one and so on. So you can replace them with a decoder. This is a revision of uh, digital logic. Tamam? So why do we call this a uh, random access memory? Because it is a, it doesn't matter which place you're gonna store in. You're gonna, you want to store here or here or here, which it doesn't matter where, where you're gonna store. Just randomly go pick any location. The access time to access that location is gonna be the same as any other location. Got it, guys? Where the name came from? Random mm -hmm. access yeah. memory? Yes. Yeah. Randomly pick any location. The, the time is not random. The time is not random. It's not sequential. It doesn't depend on a variable. It is a constant, right? It is a constant. And it's the same regardless where the location you pick. So randomly pick any location, the time is gonna be, for example, one microsecond, that's it. Okay? It depends on the control, but who controls the control? Okay, now, great, thank you, good question. You got me to the next step. Now the control bus, the control bus, uh, any, this is the last piece of the, the bus, the system bus. Uh, for each line here, we have two tri-state buffers. I'm going to do any can I'm going magnifier, okay? So this is a line. Huh? 
I'm going to take a line here, have this line. Um, let's go down, down, here. So this is a line, huh? data line. This line, each of the eight data lines, if, it's, if you're talking about an eight bit system, has a tri-state buffer in this direction and another tri-state buffer in this direction, right? This one is active high and this one is active low. You got what the bubble is? This is an inverter. Okay. Yep. So this is data line zero, for example. And this is data line zero. And this is connected to bit zero of every register, right? Now, if you want to write to it, okay. Lahada is connected together to control line zero. Now, if I want to write to the memory, I want the path to, to be enabled this way, right? So I can write a one here, right? A one will make this open, and if it's a tri-state, it's gonna be like an open circuit, right? And this one is going to be like a short circuit. And you're going to connect this way, right? This way. If you write a zero, if you write a zero, this is going to be open circuit. Zero inverted is a one, then this is going to connect. So data is going to move this way. So you read. So a zero is a read. A read is a zero, and a write is a one. So the control bus is a write slash read uh, active low, right? So this is what you see sometimes. Where did we go here, right? So the control bus is a write slash read under oh any inverted active low. So if you want to read from a memory location, you put your address on the address bus, address 010, for example, this will be enabled. And you write a, a zero on the read lines. And, and this could be connected to all of the bits, right? Any control zero, any خلص, control go, go to, to all of the these tri-state buffers, nafsum hon, nafsum hon, nafsum hon, and so on. So if you say write a zero, a read, any data is going to be moved this way, depending on the address you wrote. And the data is going to move and be come to the data bus, through the data bus to the input port. And if you want to write, you write the address on the address bus. You give, you write on the control signal the write, and so on. Just to close the loop. This is talking about the, the buses. Who controls are this? I'm coming to it. Any questions so far? So this is a RAM. This is the meaning of the RAM. I, I, I don't know why I any I talked about this to explain what is the meaning of a RAM. So randomly pick any location, the time to access that location through any to, uh, to read something from it or to write something in it is going to be the same as if you pick any other location. Tamam, guys? Doctor, just a question, Yes, sure. If the current memory is say, for one kilo, but all the AND gates to the one K location? No, yani, I mean, I wrote I wrote these these AND gates just to simplify it. I yani, the eight AND gates I used here can be replaced with a single three to eight decoder. Decoders, you can okay. just use decoders. Okay. Type. And again, uh, you know, the class is not about designing the pieces of the controller. It's not about designing the CPU, the memory or something, but 
some basics we need to know to understand how we're dealing with things. تمام. طيب. So this is the meaning of random access memory. طيب. What about RAM? Read-only memory. What is what is it about the access time for RAM? Do you think it's the same or different? It's the same, doctor, but no read, don't write. Right, but the E-square prom is right, right? You can write to it. Right? Uh, there is a kind called E-square prom. Right? Here you can write. In flash, which is a type of E-square prom, also you can write. But in terms of access time or random access memory, can we call these as random access memory? Can we call read only memory random access memory? I don't think so. Yes, you can, you can call it. You can. Because in concept, it is the same. A read only memory. A read only memory is a group of gates that you can just go. So, and, and I think you, you cover this in, in, in logic or whatever. And at the end of the day, you, you're dealing with electronics, right? So you can access and reach something regardless where it is. So randomly pick any location, you read from that location regardless where it is, because you're, you, 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 yani we're talking about the speed of the electron. So yeah, it is, you can, some, so I, I, I read this phrase in a book some, a long time ago. You can call RAM, RAM read only RAM. It is a read only RAM. Yeah. Right. Back to where we were. Here, طيب another phone, شوي. switch, switch, uh, switch, swap. طيب. Uh, let me clear, uh, clean up a little. How do I clean up here? Where is the mouse? Mm. Uh, how do I clean up here? Harry uh, Fiend. Screen, clean, black, white. Uh, hide ink. Right? I got it. طيب, so we, now we know what is a program memory. Program memory, data memory. This is the, they are either RAM or ROM, right? So data memory, okay, again, speaking about so program memory of بعدين ما لو ما يكتب هذا وين اه طيب ايفت عادت انت عملت هاي لو من هون تعمل ريس والانك من هون بقدر ريز اه بس مش مو هاي نيفل بيز اول مش عارف ليش هذا طيب اقول لك اسكيب اسكيب اوبس طيب اه اوكي سبلاي سيتنجز دبليكيت طيب ناو وات ناو وات How do we clean up? ما في شيء ريز يا رجل. في بس دكتور مش أكتف هي موجودة بس مش أكتف. بجوز بجوز لأنه. هو سألني يقول لي نو سألني يقول لي نو خليني أسكر ومفتح مرة ثانية. You want to save no? طيب وين راحوا؟ Okay. We still have a few more minutes, huh? مش مشكلة. Are we wasting time? Is 
what we are doing for me it's okay لا بالعكس دكتور يعني يعني عن جد at any point of time if you see things are يعني just repetition let me يعني we still in slide number two يعني it's not about slides or counting يعني things but we need to learn بس طيب when we talk about the memory then we, when we talk about the program memory hon we're gonna put our program so this microcontroller this microcontroller when, when we write our code is gonna go come into here and and be stored on chip okay now it's connected and it has a program i'm sure from last time and uh, what is the program is still there i don't know what it is but we, we can check it later but to stay there with no power there's no magnetic thing here there is no hard disk there is okay it's a, a solid state memory it is in microcontrollers in microcontrollers it is flash memory okay flash memory flash memory is a type of e square prompt play hello when we talk about data memory so program memory e square prompt flash memory these are a type of non volatile memory non volatile Okay, when we talk about data memory, places where we want to store our data, well, if the data is, a, is just an integer, integer X, you want to use it to as a placeholder for something, then you don't care about it anymore afterwards, it should be in RAM, right? And it should, you know, it can be in a volatile memory and you can, whenever you unplug the power, you lose it, you don't care, okay? because you always start it from zero مثلاً, and you count it or you increment it with time or whatever. But also data can be a password, for example, right? It could be a password for to unlock a, a digital lock or whatever, right? So you could, data could be needed to be volatile or non-volatile. So in case of data memory, Data memory could be RAM, the normal RAM we we're talking about, or could be an E square PROM. So you can use use E square PROM. So on our, on our microcontroller or any generic microcontroller on chip, you have memory. You have memory for the program, and it is usually flash memory. You have prom memory for the data. And usually it is two types. Usually data, the, the, it has RAM. And in microcontrollers, usually it is SRAM. While in PCs, usually it is DRAM and some in, in the cache memory, they use SRAM, right? But in microcontroller, it is SRAM. And there is another place for non-volatile memory uh, to save things forever, which is E square PROM. Hope this is clear. And we have the input output devices. Yeah, you know, when we teach uh, little kids, we, we talk about keyboards, mouse, uh, whatever here, output screen, whatever. But in embedded systems, it's, it's different a little. You don't need a keyboard to connect to this, my, to this computer. An input device here could be a push button. An input device here could be a potentiometer, right? Um, an input device here could be, could be- um, um, Sensor. Uh, a sensor, right? Or mic. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. a, a microphone, uh, a temperature sensor. Uh, an output device could be an LED, a seven segment display, a motor, and a servo motor, uh, and so on, right? So, uh, so for these I/O units, and what any an input device could be here. A sensor, a sensor could be an analog sensor, analog sensor, digital sensor, digital button, whatever. So depending on your input device, you will have a unit that would deal with it. We call it a peripheral, okay? So a serial communication, peripheral, um, analog digital converter, uh, and so on. A parallel port, and so on. 
Now I'm I'm gonna come. Uh, Shadi asked this question. تحملوني أنا شوي. We're gonna be slow a little here. بس بعدين إن شاء الله بنكبس ما في مشكلة. So yeah. So uh, يعني we talk today about these things. Is uh, is it is it good? This six fifteen. Six fifteen. I'm sorry. Okay. طيب. Uh, so uh, keep. خليني uh, بس يعني summarize. What we talked about today is the memory, and uh, I think خلاص يعني uh, we're gonna يعني move faster here. Or I'm gonna come back to memory. لما نشوفها on the hardware actually and see the addresses and how we deal with them and the memory map and everything. Uh, now uh, we're gonna talk about the processor. The processor. The first thing is the processor ALU. Just to get an, a very simple idea how, how an ALU works, we'll do this next time, inshallah. And the control unit, yeah, Shadi, yani, uh, who controls all this? What, what is the role of the control unit? Uh, what is the important th th stuff we, we're going to talk about here? Mashi, and move on. Uh, yes. Inshallah, next time. So, yani, uh, we spent a lot of time here. But... Yani, yani next time, see, yani when we get to the SCS 12, see how I was talking about the program memory. This is it, the 256 kilo flash memory, the CPU, the control unit, and the ALU, and everything is here. And here, then we're talking the, about the data memory, see, the 12 kilo RAM, the 4 kilo E square PROM. These are both data memory. This is a program memory, right? Then we we're talking about the other peripherals, the IO, they call them over there in generic which are the analog digital converter uh, uh, peripheral one, two, um, the serial communication, asynchronous, the synchronous serial communication, the CAN communication, the PWM channels, uh, the timer functions, and so on. يعني راح, راح That's why I'm taking my time. It's going to be easier for me and you guys to better understand the thing when we see it in, on the actual, in the data sheet. حتى هون, يعني we're going to spend time here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, hope everything is clear. Okay. Good. I, I ask okay. should I? I'm going to stop the recording. Yani you can stay if you have any questions. But uh, um, hope everything is going on good. Okay. Stop.